Hi, I'm Katie Peck and I'm an instructor at Living Classroom. Today we are going to be building a worm habitat so we can go and observe the underground world of an earthworm. Let's get started. Worms eat organic materials like leaf litter and can eat half their body weight every day. If a student weighing between 60 and 80 pounds ate as much as a worm, they would eat 10 loaves of bread, two gallons of milk, two dozen eggs, and 30 apples. I can't even imagine eating that much. This is one of the many reasons why I think worms are so great and mighty. So what's the job of the worm? Let's first think about what worms eat. They eat organic matter in the soil, such as leaves, dead grass, fruits, vegetables, algae, and bacteria. Worms will eat large amounts of this organic matter and then digest it and return the nutrients back into the soil. When a worm poops out this nutrient-rich material, it's called worm castings. In this role, worms are decomposers. Worms also create tunnels as they move throughout looking for their next snack. All these tunnels aerate the soil by allowing air, water, and nutrients to enter into the ground. This makes for some really happy plants. Now that we know a little bit more about earthworms, let's get started. For this project, you will need a see-through container. I'll be using a large mason jar, a spray bottle with water, a cup of sand, a large bowl of soil, some shredded leaves, and a handful of grass clippings, a few worms, and a spoon. First, let's take a look at how we're gonna layer the materials in the container. We are going to work from the bottom all the way up to the top. It's as if we are making a layered cake. So let's go ahead and start with the bottom layer. Go ahead and put about a third of your soil into your container. Worms need soil in their habitat because they normally live underground where they are protected from the sun and where they won't dry out. Also, they eat dirt. Now go ahead and grab a handful of leaves. Put in enough so that they make a layer over the soil. Go ahead and crinkle them into bite-sized pieces. Grab your spray bottle and spray it eight times, making sure the surface is completely wet. Don't allow too much water to pool and run off the surface. Worms need moisture so that they are able to breathe because they breathe through their skin. Next, scoop up a spoonful of sand and sprinkle it on top of the leaves. Because worms don't have teeth, they have adapted to be able to ingest sand and store it in their gizzard. The gizzard is an organ that helps the worm grind up their food before it travels into their intestines. Give it another eight sprays of water, making sure the habitat is nice and moist. Repeat the process two more times or continue the layers until you have almost filled up your container. Once you get close to the top, Stop and make sure there is a thin layer of soil on top, and then give it a few sprays of water. Sprinkle your grass clippings on the very top. This will help you observe how your worms move throughout their habitat, and hopefully you will see how your worms pull the clippings down into the soil as they tunnel and eat throughout their habitat. Now for the exciting part. Go ahead and gently place your worms into your container. I gave mine an extra few sprays because they look a little dry. Oh wow, check that one out! You can already see it tunneling down trying to get away from the sun and go towards the cool interior. Feel free to name your worms and write it on a piece of tape. Make sure to poke some holes on your lid so that your worms are able to breathe. Go ahead and find a dark and cool place to keep your worms. You can take it out every now and then to observe any changes. If the soil on top is dry to the touch, moisten it with water from the spray bottle. This will probably need to be done at least three times a week. Don't allow it to get too soggy though, because earthworms don't have gills. After about three weeks, go ahead and release your worms back outside into the soil, preferably somewhere in the shade. This activity comes from our third grade lesson, The Mighty Worm but we think all people would enjoy observing worms in a homemade habitat. 